Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Nathan Workman and I'm with the Charlotte School of Law Legal Writing Center. Today I'll be showing you how to format your appellate brief using Microsoft Word 2007. Now if you're seeing this, you've probably seen the videos we made a year ago on formatting your appellate brief using Word 2003. But given the drastic change between Word 2003 and 2007 in the menus, we decided to make a new revised video that shows you some of the ways to get around the new contextual menus of Word 2007. The goal of this two-part series is actually to take you step-by-step step through the entire process of formatting your appellate brief. In the first video, we're going to go through the document properties, we're going to go through the different sections of your appellate brief, formatting your text, formatting your pagination, and in the second video, I'll spend a little bit more time on things like your table of contents and your table of citations and some of the other tools and wizards that are part of Microsoft Word 2007 that can help you with your appellate brief. Before we begin, I have two caveats. First, don't begin this video unless you're near the end of your editing phase for your appellate brief. If you're still moving around paragraphs and adding sections, adding cases, adding additional notes, and adding additional references, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. It makes a lot more sense to wait until you're nearly finished and then format it and edit it once as opposed to many times throughout the writing process. Second, the appellate brief that I'm working with today was provided by a faculty member at Charlotte School of Law, but it's not the format for an appellate brief at Charlotte School of Law or any other school. It's merely a guideline that you can use. Clearly, if you get any instructions from your professor or a requirements list from your professor for the formatting, that takes precedence over anything that you hear in this video. First, let's start off with a brand new document. The main thing that we're going to consider here are the margins of the document. Now my instruction sheet tells me that I need to have one inch margins all the way around the document. So how do I do that? Well, I go here to the Page Layout tab up top. I'm going to click that and click on Margins. So once I click on that, it shows me all the different types of settings that I can use. You can also use the custom margin setting at the bottom. Since uh, the normal setting for Word 2007 is one inch margins, we're just going to click that and we've completed it. Next, I'm going to start putting in the sections of my appellate brief. I have an example of a cover here that my professor gave me, so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in my new document. With a completed cover, we can move on to the statement regarding oral argument. To add that, I'm going to insert a page break. I click here at Page Setup in the Page Layout menu to Breaks, and the first option is a page break. So we click that and now we're at the beginning of the second page. And I also have an example of a statement regarding oral argument that I was given in my class. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into my new document. Next I'm going to hit enter and add another page break. The next section is going to be the table of contents. So I'm going to go ahead and add the header for that and we'll format the text later, but for right now let's just write it in. Next we'll have the table of authorities. The table of authorities will be the last section that we use with Roman numerals in the appellate brief. After table of authorities we're going to want to use Arabic numerals. So here instead of using a simple page break, I'm going to need to have a section break. And a section break is the trick for that. We'll get into more of that later when we talk about pagination. But right now all you need to know is that you need to insert Instead of a page break here, you need to insert a section break, and you'll want to insert a next page section break. The next section has the statement of jurisdiction, the statutes and regulations involved, statement of issues, and everything up to the summation of the argument. Now here, I finished that in this document, and I have my final draft prepared. So I'm going to select all of this, copy it, and I'm going to paste it into this document. At the end of conclusion, we're going to insert another page break, and this is where our certificate of service is going to go. And here's an example that I have of a certificate of service. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste that in. With that, we're now going to move on to text formatting, and just scan over the document to make sure everything posted properly. Once you finish scanning your document to make sure the paragraphs are spaced properly, you can begin working on your headers. The top headings are supposed to be bold, underlined, and in all caps. 
and I'm going to do the same thing to Table of Contents. You can right click over top of it, hit Bold, you can go to Font, and you can click Underline, and then you can center it. The other way to do this, if you don't want to do the right click commands, you can go to Home. This is one of the major changes for Word 2007. The font and paragraph commands are on home. Once you've finished formatting your headings throughout the document, you can begin working on the outline headings that you have for your arguments. Here's one for instance. For outline headings, there's no hard and fast rule for how they should be positioned in the document. The main point is that they just should be consistent throughout the entire document. What I'm going to do for the first level here, for my Roman numerals, I'm going to adjust it aligned with my paragraph text. I'm going to make a first line indent half an inch, and I'm going to make my hanging indent at half an inch. For A, I'm going to go one step inside of my Roman numeral 1. That way it looks consistent, looks lined up. I take my first line indent, and I drag it so it's even with the text. That's going to be at half an inch. I take my first line tab, and I'm going to set it at 1. And then I take my hanging indent, and I move it to 1 and you can see how that puts the A for the heading directly underneath this text and then steps it over half an inch for the body text. It's easy to tell what's a heading and what's a uh, paragraph text. And again for this I'm going to do the same thing that I did for A. I'm going to line the one underneath the text of the previous level. I'm going to set the first line tab for half an inch then I'm going to move the second line indent over half an inch as well. Now that we're finished formatting our text, we've done all of our main headings, we've done all of our outline headings, and we've looked at all of our paragraphs to make sure that they're lined properly. Uh, another point too is for a heading, they're single spaced, there's a single line in between them, and then the body text, the paragraph text, is double spaced. And anytime you have a block quote or something like that, remember it's always single spaced. So once you're finished with that, we're ready to begin our page numbers. Now you'll remember we added a section break right after the table of authorities. So the top here, the table of authorities page and up, is one section, and from the table of authorities page below is another section. Now we're going to add page numbers. So we're going to start here on the second section of our document. We're going to go up to Insert, we're going to go here to Page Number, we're going to go to the bottom of the page, and see how this one's centered like this? We're going to click that, and see it automatically added in the bottom. But notice, it's showing this as being page 5. Well, it is page 5. We have 21 pages in the document. But remember, the top section is going to be in Roman numerals, and this bottom section is going to be in Arabic numerals. So this is actually starting at 1. The way we make it start at 1 is to close the header and footer. We're going to go back to Insert, Page Number, and Format Page Numbers right here. It's the fifth option down. You click this, and instead of Continue from Previous Section, the first top section, we're going to say Start at 1. When you click Start at 1 and click OK, you notice the number changes from 5 to 1, and that's what we want. But the top section, has no page numbers. We're going to click anywhere up here, and we're going to repeat the process, but we're going to do it slightly differently. Here I'm also going to add page number, bottom of the page, and in the center. And then I close header and footer. Then I go back to insert, page number, format page numbers. See here at the top we have number format? I'm going to click this and go down to my lowercase Roman numerals. And instead of continuing from the previous section, I'm going to start at 1. And as you can see, the top section now has lowercase Roman numerals. So at the conclusion of this first video, you have all the text inputted for your appellate brief into one master document. You have all of your text and all of your headings formatted. You have all the different sections incorporated for your entire appellate brief. And you're all ready to start building your table of contents and table of citations. And please join me in the second video if you'd like to learn how to do that.